Alrighty, hello. Today we're going to be talking about the shift in seasons and how that impacts your diet and what's going to be supportive for you. So I am currently in America where we are shifting into winter right now. If you're in Australia, you're shifting into summer. This video still makes sense. So let's dive into it. Um, I was reminiscing the other day about the good old days when I used to restrict and make myself eat raw broccoli in the middle of winter. I'm not kidding here. I, I was actually scrolling my phone and I saw pictures of like past meals that I used to have. I used to always be obsessed about taking photos of my food and pretty much like everything is there. I've deleted a lot of them, but I've kept some of them just because this is the work I do and it's interesting to like have that to like reference back to. So. I was scrolling my phone and I see some photos of the meals that I was eating in the dead of winter in Utah when I was in college. Mind you, Utah, it's a snowy place. It's cold. It like sometimes would get into the negative, so like negative 19 degrees. So it's freezing outside and it was shocking to me to see that I was eating like huge big kale salads with tons of raw veggies in it and I was doing like green smoothies and I was doing like all of these just like very cold foods in the middle of winter and I remember <laughs> I remember those days I remember those days of forcing myself to eat these like cold raw foods um and feeling so off from it and yet I was like, no, but this is healthy, like the raw vegan diet or eating a ton of vegetables and eating salads and stuff like that. Like, this is healthy. This is what I got to do. Like, never mind the fact that it's like negative 20 degrees outside. And it, it doesn't shock me now when I look back at it that I was dealing with intense constipation, bloating, gas, like so much just pain in my stomach area and gastrointestinal tract all of the time and I'm like no duh again you were trying to eat like raw broccoli in the middle of winter first off raw broccoli is always going to be harsh on the system like no matter what season it is but especially in winter when it's so cold outside and your body is just asking you to just warm up that is nourishing satiating foods um and so I'm talking about this because I'm in the shift of season right now like we really stayed pretty warm up until like last week when all of a sudden it went from like 80 degrees to like 34 in the morning. So it's cold and I've noticed that this week I've made potato, I'll put it here, I think I have some videos of it. I made a potato sea bass like kind of clam chowdery type of soup that we put in this like bread bowl. We made ramen and that was like super good. It was like a chicken ramen, really nice warm broth with the noodles. Uh, we've made, I made chicken pot pies the other day, which was really delicious. Um, I made a lasagna the other day, a bunch of like eggplant, beef, tomatoes, cheese, noodles, all of that stuff. Um, and, and I've just noticed that like my body is just wanting warm. I'm not doing ice lattes anymore. I'm doing like warm hot lattes with whipped cream on top. Um, and there's been this just like natural shift. And I remember, again, that I, I would fear this shift. I would like fight against it. And it just felt so wrong. And, you know, this last week as it has gotten cold and I'm feeling like drinking more and more just like warm things and eating warm foods, it just feels so right, you know? It just feels so aligned with the season, with the weather outside. And I know that previous me used to always associate like winter foods with, um, with, foods that would make you gain weight or more like more calorically dense foods and then I get really in my head about that because I'd be like I don't want to gain weight I don't want to change my foods I want to still be eating summery like salads um and I had that type of mentality and I want to just help you guys have a different mentality here and see this from a different point of view um I focus as you guys know if you follow me on Instagram I focus a lot on just like metabolic health like metabolically what is going to be supportive for you and when we look at this from like a metabolic standpoint, like the thing that is going to be metabolically most supportive, mind you, metabolism meaning good digestion, balanced hormones, strong immunity, like that's what metabolism covers, right? It's not just like what your body weight, size, and shape is. I talked about that in my course, Get Your Flow In A Lot. We have like a whole module on redefining health and understanding, understanding, sorry, the metabolism. Um, but uh, I, I look at this from this metabolic perspective of like what's going to be supportive for me right now. 
Well, if it is cold outside and my body is losing heat, I need to warm myself up, keep my body temp up. That's such an important element of a good starch metabolism is you have a good, strong body heat. And the foods that are going to help me kind of keep and cultivate more body heat in my uh, system is going to be those warming, nutrient-dense foods, the stews, the soups, like those type of things. Um, and so that helps my body stay out of this like oh, stress state, we're cold, we're cold, let's shut down, like let's shut down digestion, let's shut down everything. Like we literally are in a stress state, it's cold, it's winter, and we're eating cold foods and we're not maintaining good body heat. That's going to be really stressful to the body. And so these warming foods, again, are very supportive for your metabolism during those winter months. So it helps keep you nice and warm. Those foods are also just going to digest better. You guys, we are one in our element, right? It's not just like humans in nature. I'm like, we're living in nature and we are part of the seasons. And as it gets darker earlier, our circadian rhythm is changing. Our hormones are changing. Like everything's shifting and changing. And again, so too does your nutritional needs. Your body is going to need more of those uh, warming, nutrient-dense foods during winter to help keep you satiated, balanced, and feeling really healthy and good during the winter months. Um, I've never felt healthier eating a bunch of, you know, very dense stews and lamb tagines and things like that than I ever have. And, you know, mind you, I spent 11 years trying to do the whole, like, let me just eat a bunch of veggies and salads and stuff during winter, and I never felt healthy. I never felt satiated. I never felt warm. I never felt nourished at all. And feeling nourished is what healthy is. It's not a body size. It's not, look, I was able to only eat 1,200 calories today. That's not what health is. Health is staying nourished. And for those of you who are fearing, oh, these foods are going to make me gain weight, I'm like, those foods, again, they're supporting your system. And for those of you who are like fearing that you start adding in those foods, you're going to start gaining more weight. I'm like, well, then <laughs> you probably need to gain weight. If your body is gaining a lot of weight because you just start, you know, naturally start eating warmer foods, like that shows how much you were suppressing your body before. And we don't want to suppress our body because that never equates to health. That always equates to like irregular hormones and bone density issues and brain fog and digestive issues, sleep disruption. It, it equates to all of those things. It's not equating to health. So a reminder here that it's okay for you to stop drinking your kale smoothies and to make a nice warm bowl of porridge or to have quiche in the morning. It is okay for you to stop eating salads for lunch and to start eating like a nice warm pasta or a nice good soup with bread rolls. It's okay for your diet to start shifting and changing in the winter months or as you transition into summer. Like it's okay for your diet to change is the main message of this video. I again used to think it was stagnant. It was this is the ultimate diet in life. We have to follow it no matter what no matter what season and, and it just is ridiculous that's why i hate these type of like diet type of things because i'm like it makes no sense because again you're you're giving someone a diet plan or a meal plan for you know this like super light snack on cucumbers eat carrot sticks type of thing and i'm like and they live in montana in the middle of winter and they're trying to like eat something that's just so anti-nature if you continually are going against nature like I'm sorry, yes, like, your body's going to start going against you. Like, don't get mad at it for having digestive issues. It's kind of your fault for having those digestive issues. Again, when you're trying to eat foods that are so out of season, so out of place, just because you think it's what's healthy. And so I hope that this video just kind of rings an alarm bell for someone here and goes like, hmm, that's right. Maybe I should be shifting things. Maybe I shouldn't be so rigid with my meals and rigid with my like diet plan. And I should open up to the fact that now it's winter and I should be eating new things. Get curious. What do I feel like eating right now? What feels good? What feels like it would be nourishing and satiating and warming and just substantial enough to help me go through these winter months? Such a different viewpoint to start asking your body that, right? You go from what's going to help me lose weight to all of a sudden what's going to help my body like literally thrive throughout these cold winter months.
oh, that's such a more beautiful way of working with your body. When you work with your body, guys, your health is going to improve and you're going to feel better, okay? That's always the end goal here with everything that I say and teach to you guys. The end goal is how to make you feel better, not worse, not uglier, not like... Gosh, it's like the things that I had in my mind about like recovery is here to just make me fat, ugly, lazy. I'm like, what? Recovery was here to give me my hormones, to give me my fertility back, to make me feel grounded and present and to open myself up to love and um, give me back my sex drive and that desire to be intimate with others. Like, that's what recovery did. And so it's viewing recovery in a different way. Recovery is here to literally ameliorate your life. And the foods that are going to help you get to this place of recovery are here to ameliorate your life. And that's just all I wanted to share with you guys today. If you have any thoughts, you can dot them down below. Follow me on Instagram, guys, at Flow with Chloe. And yeah, I think that's it for today. I hope you guys have a good one.